<laughs> or should we really like a psychiatrist couch here or something? Um, I, you know, I, I think to some degree I was born this way, but and then it was amplified by a difficult childhood, frankly. Um, so, uh, but I can remember even in happy moments when I was a kid that there's just it just feels like there's just a a rage of forces in my mind constantly. Um, but now this, you know, productively manifests itself in technology and building things uh, for the most part. So, and I, and I think on balance, the output has been very productive. Um, I think the results, as we you know, discussed earlier with SpaceX, Tesla, PayPal, which is you know, still growing today. Um, the uh, first internet company that I started, in fact, the first internet company I started Zip2 was um, uh, funded by a New York Times company, yep. Hearst and Knight Ritter, and I at, uh, we wrote some of the software for the New York Times website, right. um, and we helped bring online several hundred uh, newspapers that previously were only in print. Um, now, this is in the 90s, which at this point is like, I'm like a grandpa flat, basically. Um, you know, the 90s and internet feels like a pre-Cambrian era when there were only sponges. Um, so, um, anyway, so, you know, I feel like a lot of productive things have been done. And you can also look at, te at Tesla as, as being sort of many companies in one. Like our supercharging network is, if it were, it, if, if the Tesla supercharging network were its own company, it would be a Fortune 500 company by itself. Just, just, just the supercharging system. Um, we also make the cells. We, we, we build the power electronics and the powertrain from scratch. Um, we have the most innovative uh, structural design, the largest castings ever used. Um, we have the, the best manufacturing technology at Tesla, better manufacturing technology than companies that have been doing it for 100 years. So, so th these, these demons of the mind, are, you know, are, for the most part, uh, harnessed to productive ends. Um, okay, so let me ask you but that about doesn't that mean that once in a while they, you know, uh, go wrong. But, and this is a question I think a lot of people, you know, are always trying to figure out about not just you, but sometimes themselves. Meaning, what is driving all of this? You're doing all of these things. Do you think it's, it, do you think that you would be as successful, whatever success is, if it wasn't being driven by some, I think that there's something you're trying to prove, either to yourself or to somebody. I don't know. We're all trying to prove something. Maybe I'm trying to, to prove it to my mother. I don't know. No. If I were to say, describe my, my philosophy, it is a philosophy of curiosity. Um, if, um, I mean, I, I did have this existential crisis when I was uh, around 12 uh, about what's the meaning of life? Isn't it all pointless? Why not just commit suicide? Why exist? Um, I read the religious texts. Um, I read the philosophy books. Um, that, well, especially the German philosophy books, made me quite depressed, frankly. One should not read Schopenhauer and Nietzsche as a teenager. Um, but then I read uh, Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is a book on philosophy in the form of humor. And the point that uh, Adams was making there was that uh, we don't actually know what questions to ask. Um, that's why I said that, you know, the answer is 42. Like, basically, Earth's a giant computer, and, and it came up with the answer 42. But then to actually figure out what the question is, that's the actual hard part. Um, I think this is generally true also in physics. At the point at which you can uh, properly frame the question, the answer is, is actually the easy part. Um, so, so, so my motivation then was that, well, my life is finite, really a flash in the pan in the, on a galactic t time scale. Uh, but if we can expand the scope and scale of consciousness, 
then we are better able to figure out what questions to ask about the answer that is the universe. And maybe we can find out the meaning of life or even what question to, what, what the right question to ask is. Um, you know, where did we come from? Where are we going? Um, where are the aliens? Are there aliens? Um, and, you know, these, these questions, you know, and is there new physics to discover? Uh, or is this, because there seems to be some real questions around dark matter and dark energy and... Um, so, the, the purpose of SpaceX is to extend life beyond Earth on a sustained basis so that we can at least pass one of the Fermi Great Filters, uh, which is that of being a single planet civilization. Um, if we are a single planet civilization, then we are simply waiting around for some extinction event, whether that is man-made or uh, natural. Um, but if you're a single planet civilization, eventually you will, uh, something will happen to that planet and you will die. If you're a multi-planet civilization, you will live m much longer. Also, a multi-planet civilization, uh, is the, that's the natural stepping stone to being a multi-stellar civilization and being out there among the stars. So now this, I think, has two, this, this is not simply a defensive uh, motivation, um, but it is also one where that you know, that gives meaning, man's search for meaning. Can I ask you, um, but this is a, I, let me finish this philosophy point, even though it may seem rather esoteric. Um, it may resonate with a few people. Um, we must get past this Fermi filter of being a, a, this great filter of being a single planet civilization. Um, and if we do that, we are more likely to understand the nature of the universe and what questions to ask. Um, if you're a believer in the philosophy of curiosity, then, then I think you should support this ambition. Um, and, but, but it's more, there's, being a multi-planet species is more than, than simply, you know, life, ins life insurance for life collectively. That's a defensive reason. But, but, I, but I think also that, that, that life has to be more than simply solving one sad problem after another. You know, there have, to be, there have to be reasons where you wake up in the morning and you're happy to be alive. There have to be reasons that you, you have to say, why are you excited about the future? Like, what gives you hope? And, and, and if, you, if, you, if you aren't sure, ask your kids. And, and, and I think the idea of us being a space-faring civilization and being out there among the stars is incredibly inspiring um, and exciting and something to look forward to. And there need to be such things in the world.